So is the 4C a good road trip car? I'm gonna find out. I'm about to head up to Colorado for the Auto Mezzi, which is a big Italian car show. And hey, check this out. You like the 4C t-shirt? Of course you can get those at bookautoworks.com. I'll leave a link down in the description below for the merch shop. It's a little different link than that, but whatever. And of course I was gonna head out this morning and it just started pouring, so. I'm getting out of here a little bit later than I really wanted to get out of here. We got 836 miles ahead of me for the, the first leg. But you know, that's just the beginning of the trip. I'm gonna be driving all over Colorado. Can't wait to get this thing out on some mountain passes. I'm gonna be gone or on the road for five days and there's not a lot of room in the 4C. You can see the Book Auto Works 4C duffel bag. The trunk is completely packed. The passenger seat is pretty much all packed as well. And you know, the seats are kind of thin on the 4C and there's no insulation or carpeting. You just have these little floor mats. Yeah, not exactly a road trip car, but we're gonna make it work. Let's uh, go ahead and reset the trip. Reset trip A. And I reset the little mileage down here as well. And take note of the temperature. It's been a nice, cool, rainy morning and it's still 82 degrees here in Texas. Can't wait to see what it's gonna be in Colorado. First fill up, only 134 miles in. Of course, I didn't start off with the full tank. Average fuel consumption is 27.5. That's a little lower than it used to be. Stopped at All Sups for some chicken nugs. Wow, Mexico sure is pretty. Let's see what happens when I drop the hammer. little gas station and they have 91 according to the pump but the pump didn't let me select 91 I went inside and they said we don't sell premium honey I gotta go find me some premium somewhere <laughs> don't stop for gas in Paducah Texas all right I was getting pretty low on gas but I found a Kefco they have 90 which that uh, stinks I'm gonna have to throw in a can of octane booster good thing I brought some of this stuff West Texas is a lot different from Central Texas. Some of it is pretty, but it's mostly just a whole lot of flat nothing. Hours and hours of nothing. Be sure to download some podcasts because cell reception's spotty out here too. Ah, oh, where am I? It smells like crude oil. It's terrible. Ah, we're in Dalhart. 578 miles and nine and a half hours, still in Texas. After a brief plague of locusts, I did eventually get to the New Mexico border. That only took about 10 hours. I had nice thunderstorms all the way through New Mexico and up Raton Pass as well. But fortunately it cleared right over I got over the pass and was able to take a great picture next to the Colorado sign. Well, I finally made it to the travel inn. Let's check out the room. I got the king size bedroom. Floors are nice wood, I like that. It's definitely an older hotel, but it looks really nice, I like it. Coffee pot, microwave, fridge, TV, everything you need. I already put all my crap down. Let's uh, check out the bathroom. Complimentary soaps, I'll be taking that with me, that's for sure. Nice basic shower. Yeah, it's all right. This place was cheap too. And really, my favorite part about old hotels like this is that I can just look out the window and see my car. Get to park right in front of the room. I started off day two with a 859 miles on the tripometer. And the car was pretty dirty, so I decided to give it a quick wash before I hit the road. I also noticed one of my tires were low, so good thing I brought my portable inflator. I headed northwest out of Canyon City, and the roads were quite beautiful. I got on Highway 9 to eventually go to Fairplay to meet up with a friend, but also had to make a pretty important book auto work stop. More on that in a minute, but just kick back for the moment and enjoy the scenery.
can't drive your car on a gravel road, it's not a real car. You know, I can't make a stop in Colorado without checking out my original junkyard. I put this sign out here like 20 years ago and it's still here. Pretty amazing. I guess that's that nice dry climate. But look at that view. Oh, and I also want to say this is the location for my Eclipse Party 2045. So you'll mark your calendars for that. And you know, there was some washboarding on the road coming in here, but the 4C did just fine. Definitely looks awesome on the nice gravel road. After I left my junkyard, I headed up to Fairplay. Random little rainstorms. That's what happens. I met up with my buddy Chris. You probably remember him from some Lotus videos. He was really excited to show me some authentic Tex-Mex up there in Fairplay. So yeah, I drove a thousand miles to South Park just for some Mexican food. After lunch, I needed to head up to Blackhawk, which is where I was staying the night, but I wanted to do some more scenic driving. So instead of doing the smart thing and heading north, I headed back south just a little bit over to Terriall Road. That's always a fantastic drive. But of course it started raining again, so I couldn't enjoy it to its full potential, but it was still very scenic. Enjoy about a minute of the nice scenery here. All right, check out what I found. The Coney Island hot dog place. Isn't that freaking cool? I got me an elk hot dog sitting next to the creek. It took a little longer than expected, but it ended the day at 1,100 miles. And I got rock star parking at the hotel too. So this is the Monarch Casino and Resort. It's uh, pretty darn nice, especially for the price. Oh wow, you can even take a seat down in the shower. Sounds fun. There's the shitter. Hello. Nice looking bed, nice big TV, got a cure egg, we like that. Uh, check out the view. I see another casino over there, and then the mountain. Very nice. I really enjoyed the Monarch, especially the pool and spa area. The outdoor hot tub was excellent. And these are pictures from their website. I didn't want to be a weirdo with my camera at the pool. On day three, I met up with the local Alpha and Fiat clubs for a little drive. Man, an SZ. You don't see those very often. No, they're pretty rare. Yeah. It was obviously a great day to go for a drive because the Lotus and Triumph clubs had the same idea. We hung back and let the stuffy British clubs take off so we wouldn't ruin their formalized fun. When we headed out of Golden, we took the Golden Gate Canyon Road over to the famous Peak to Peak Highway and up to Estes Park for lunch. The roads were a little too busy for spirited driving, but it was still a very beautiful drive. Enjoy the scenery with me for a minute.
About halfway through, we stopped at a little reservoir for some pictures. We ate at a place called Claire's and I had the wild game meatloaf. Pretty good. I really want to thank everyone for joining me for the drive. It really made me feel right at home. We had a great time. On the way back to the hotel, I stopped to take a couple of pictures and I finished off the day at 1,273 miles. On the fourth day of the trip, I had to get up early for the auto mezzi, but that gave me the chance to enjoy some tunnels. The drive out of Blackhawk is quite pretty too. The Automezzi is a pretty big deal and it deserves its own separate video, so stay tuned for that one. This has been very typical for this trip. It's rained almost every day in the afternoon. And that's pretty typical for Colorado during the summer, but hey, you know, it's still pretty. Wow, I just noticed it says it's 56 degrees on the dash. That's incredible. I left the Automezzi directly to head towards my next destination in Cripple Creek and had foul weather the whole way there. Yep, it's still raining and the temperature has dropped down to 47 degrees. This is why I put all seasons on the car before I left. This would be a beautiful road if uh, it wasn't so nasty out. Not only is it raining, but it's kind of foggy too. I love how these red cliffs look. You have the bright red dirt juxtaposed with the uh, evergreens. Check out that view down there. Beautiful mountain streams. Wow, look at that. out. You see all the burnt out trees? There was obviously a forest there at some point here not too long ago. You probably can't see it, but Cripple Creek is right down there. Oh, this gold mine tour right here is pretty cool. Uh, I did this a few years ago. So this is the Cripple Creek Hospitality House. It was originally a hospital built in 1901. Very Victorian looking, isn't it? I'm sure it's thoroughly haunted. I'm going to enjoy spending the night here. So the room is super cool. It's got a nice little view out here. It's very, very old school. Inside the armoire here is the TV. A little bit of modern convenience. Check out the artwork. Kind of cool. Even the door is neat. You got stained glass up above it. And the bathroom, the fan runs all the time, so I apologize for that noise. Here's the shower. Tiny little storage cubby. Yeah. Pretty nice. Man, there's just so much to look at in here. Very cool. If you notice the names on all the rooms, they're named after parts of the hospital. Oh, there's a lounge down here. Hey, how cool is this? Going up the stairs to my room. That's what some of the other rooms look like. Nice little balcony. Too bad it's closed. Oh, just a little fox wandering around town. Hello, little fox. So this is downtown Cripple Creek. It's a cute little mining town, or used to be mining town, you know. 
It's got lots of little shops, but the goal right now is finding dinner. I had a mac and cheeseburger at a place called The District. Very good. So we really do have donkeys just walking around in the middle of the street. Hello, donkeys. I started out the fifth and final day of my road trip at 1,424 miles. And even though it was time to head back home, I was determined to get in one more little drive. I found a great road coming out of Cribble Creek called Teller County Road Number 1, which hooked up to High Park Road, which took me back down to Canyon City. It's been 1,718 miles. I'm finally back in Texas and only about nine more hours to go till I get home. Yeah, Texas is big. Well, I'm back in my own garage. That took about 14 hours, got in around midnight and you can still see some of the water on the car. It was raining pretty good most of the way back. You know, when you go on a road trip in a car, it's not just your mode of transportation. It's a partner. It's a, another member of the party of the road trip. And I think the 4C did an excellent job. It was a lot of fun driving this thing all over the place. I think it was about 2,300 miles total. I'll show a little screenshot of the dash. But yeah, so what do I think about road tripping in the 4C? Well, the seats are kind of thin. It's not that comfortable, but I was okay, you know? Not too bad. And some of the more rougher roads, it definitely moved around a bit. Oh, and it is quite loud in there. On that topic, I will say though, that the Texas roads, the Texas asphalt, for whatever reason, is much louder than the New Mexico and Colorado asphalt. I couldn't tell you why, but just driving on Texas asphalt, the road noise is deafening. I always carry headphones with me in this car anyway, so I, you know, doesn't damage my hearing, but I hardly used them when I was in Colorado. The road noise just wasn't that severe. So I don't know, something to think about. This tire inflator ended up being a lifesaver because on the second day, this tire over here started leaking. And then on the third day, a tire over there on the other side started leaking. But neither one of them was very severe. So I just kept topping it off and eh, it worked pretty good. I'm back. <laughs> so what do you think? Would you take a 4C on a road trip? I highly recommend it because I made so many great friends. Everyone enjoyed seeing the car. It was just a lot of fun. And it's great to have a fun car to drive whenever you're out visiting some places. Well, bye. Thanks for watching. I'll have a video of the auto Muzzy posted here sometime soon. And oh, be sure you check out the link below to get a t-shirt or hoodie or something like that for yourself. See you guys next time. Like and subscribe.